Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at a game I bought many, many years ago, but only played it a couple times before forgetting about it totally and moving on to the next console, Mickey Mania. Growing up as a huge fan of Disney games in general, from DuckTales on the original Nintendo to Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse and Quackshot starring Donald Duck, for the Sega Genesis, I always enjoyed action platforming games that they had. It was always fun to see how close game developers were in incorporating an actual animated character, like Mickey, as close as if they were watching it on TV. Aladdin for the Genesis was one of the first games to truly push animation on a console to its limit. I've always heard that the CD tech at the time had enough room to input as many animation frames as possible to add to the visual experience. When Mickey Mania was announced for the Sega CD, I immediately pre-ordered the game to ensure that I got the best version possible. When the game finally released and was in my hands, unfortunately, I just recently purchased, on sale, I might add, the Sega 32X and was trying 32-bit gaming. Also reading up on the news of the Sega Saturn, I was deep into next-gen consoles way too much that I played Mickey Mania literally for 20 minutes, saying I'll come back to it later. Being released at the end of the Sega CD lifespan didn't help as I was on my way playing much of 94 and 95 with Virtual Fighter on the 32X, and then moving on to the Sega Saturn. I just never gave the game a chance until now. It's time to dust off that Sega CD and see what the hype was all about. Mickey Mania, The Timeless Adventures of Mickey Mouse was developed by Traveler's Tales and released by Sony Imagesoft in 1994 for the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Sega CD, and finally in Europe on Sony's PlayStation in 1996. The game is a platformer with the likes of the older Disney video games, but in my opinion, much, much harder. The memories came back very quickly when I moved on from this game. The game is not forgiving at all. Now I know that 2D platforming does require some skills, but this is not your average game made for children. The gameplay is very responsive and feels great controlling Mickey as he jumps high and low and throws marbles as he collects. Stars help with keeping you alive on how many hits you can take and you will be taking many hits. You travel with Mickey on levels based on cartoons he starred in ranging from the iconic Steamboat Willie and to Mickey and the Beanstalk to Prince and the Popper. You will play each level over and over and over again, learning all the exact moments of danger to how to attack enemies trying to avoid from getting hit. Visual clues are all over the place and that will help you, but you will die along the way. The game will take about an hour to complete if you figure out every level on your own. But I took much more overall trying to learn the game that demands precise controls. The hit detection is the most frustrating part as it is way too easy to take damage. The visuals are excellent in this game being almost like playing a cartoon on television. By far the best animated cartoon based game I have played in the 16 bit era. From all the details in the animation in every character give them character and personality never seen before to be captured perfectly. The scaling for the time was also done impressively for the systems. The PlayStation version of the game looks much cleaner and has more colors and detailed backgrounds. The game was released in Europe, so it is incorporates the PAL limitations at 50 Hz instead of the North American NTSC at 60 Hz. This makes the game look a bit more sluggish and slower by comparison. Here I go! Back! Oh! <laughs> 
The sound is excellent. Being in CD format, it just adds to the visual brilliance. The game, although short, is a testament to retro gaming at its best, where you die and keep dying until you figure out how to move on. The game rewards you with stunning levels and one of the best Mickey Mouse games ever created. Now that I understand the hype, just remember what you're getting into if you think this will just be an easy game to conquer. Mickey Mania gets a strong 8.5 out of 10 for its fantastic visuals, smooth as self gameplay, and with enough challenge that will surprise and frustrate but reward you in the end. The Sega CD and PlayStation versions are identical in content besides their visuals, while the Sega Genesis lacks some hidden areas where the Super Nintendo takes the most hit missing a level and some story sequences. That's it for me on this retro look at Mickey Mania. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Be ho out and great. Take us out of here and I will see you all next upload. Damn.